My 26-year-old fiancé and I, 27, are planning to marry soon. We had been planning this for a long time and everything was finally coming together. Invitations were sent. We had already scheduled service providers and had our vows ready. We were only excited about the big day. But as the day approached, my doubts grew. When I was at home, my fiancé became guarded and panicked, which made me suspicious. I tried talking to her about it, but she kept insisting that I was imagining things and blaming it on wedding nerves. I decided to go with it and pretend everything was fine. Then one day when I returned home, I noticed a manly scent in the air. It was definitely not mine, so I casually mentioned it to her. I was curious if she had someone over or if she had purchased a new perfume that did not suit her. She seemed taken aback by the suggestion and pretended not to notice the scent herself. She dismissed it, claiming it was probably from someone with a strong odor she encountered while out in public. However, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. My instincts kept telling me to look deeper into the situation. So, this is what I did. I secretly installed a small camera on our living room bookshelf without her knowledge, and I went to work as usual the next day. When I got home, we talked about our wedding day and other typical end-of-day topics. I reviewed the camera footage after confirming that she had fallen asleep. Turns out, I saw her kissing a close mutual friend in the living room before going to the bedroom. I did not dwell on the video. I just got what I needed. I saved it to a drive and began planning how to confront her and hold her accountable for breaking my trust. I pretended to be clueless throughout the lead-up to our wedding day. It was too late to cancel everything, so I went ahead with my plans for the big day. I told her I had a surprise for her because I would be waiting at the end of the aisle before she got ready. I was able to hand the DJ a pen drive containing the incriminating footage. Then I assumed my position with a smile on my face, partly because I knew she had no idea what was about to strike her. Before anything else happened, I posed for photos, greeted guests, and made sure I knew where our mutual friend was seated. He didn't even appear guilty. Finally, my fiancé walked down the aisle, and the priest reached the point where he asked if anyone objected to the marriage. Nobody said anything. Not even our mutual friend, who was involved with my cheating fiancé. It appeared that we were moving forward, so I decided to lighten the mood by saying, I do. The guests also laughed. Perhaps they thought I was joking, but I stuck to it. I summoned a friend who appeared stunned. That's when I believe my fiancé realized what was going on and silently pleaded with me not to cause a scene. But I motioned for the DJ to play the footage and told her that she should go with our mutual friend because they seemed to be meant for each other. I gave them my blessing and walked away. She began crying, claiming she had gotten cold feet. Then chaos broke out among the guests. Everyone was yelling accusations from all sides, and some people became very agitated. The priest was bewildered. My fiancé was in tears, and our mutual friend vanished into the crowd. Needless to say, we returned the rings, and I told her we were finished. She and her family are upset with me, claiming there is a better way to handle the situation. But, hey, emotions were high, and that's how it turned out. I really let them have it about my fiancé's promiscuous daughter and demanded that they repay me for everything I spent on the wedding. Otherwise, I had threatened to post the video on Facebook. My ex freaked out, so I'm hoping they'll cough up the money soon. That is the chaotic situation I'm currently dealing with. Update. My ex's parents agreed to reimburse me when they appeared stressed. I believe it's coming from their retirement savings. I feel sorry for them. To be honest, I'm a 40-year-old man who left my ex-wife, Z, who will turn 37 in March. She persuaded me that we should resume our relationship after about three years of her shutting me out, physically sleeping on the couch, and claiming she was asexual and no longer interested in sex. She said, we should do this for me, and mentioned that she had already spoken with a mutual female acquaintance A about having a threesome, and she appeared interested. I was like, okay, but I had three conditions. We could all veto bad partner choices. We'd use protection and be open about everything. About a month later, Z asked me to take the kids to my parents' house for the weekend so she could invite a co-worker over for drinks and movies. When I mentioned our situation to her, she pretended she had no idea what I was talking about, claiming she barely knew. At the time, she convinced me that I needed antipsychotics despite my doctor's advice and that I was schizophrenic, making me question my own memory and judgment. 
During that time, I messaged A on Facebook, and she confirmed that Z had not contacted her at all. So I confronted Z about it, and she denied discussing anything with me, claiming it was none of my business. When I returned home from visiting my parents, the living room smelled like Zach's, as if they had a wild session on the couch and didn't bother to cover it up. I checked my outdoor security cameras and accidentally overheard them taking a smoke break. I did not want to listen, but I couldn't help myself. I overheard her discussing how things would be different if I weren't in the picture. They then did something outside on the porch after midnight, right? In view of our neighbor's windows, she had the audacity to say, I thought you were asexual. When I questioned her about it, she responded, I never said that. Perhaps you need more medication. It was extremely hurtful. Over the next few months, I took the kids away every weekend and watched them three times a week so she could have dates. Our date nights got even worse. She started having sex with me once a week around that time, but she still refused to sleep next to me. The entire situation was heartbreaking and confusing. The next week, she found a date on Fet Life who physically harmed her at her request, leaving her black and blue. It was so bad that she had to take a week off work and didn't leave the couch. I was completely devastated. Realizing that our relationship was in trouble, I looked for a couples therapist named T. However, Z refused to see her simply because T happened to be black. Before I met D, I made sure she could help me deal with my problems on my own. When Z backed out, I started regular therapy with her. Over the next few months, I tried to accept the open relationship, even though I couldn't find anyone interested in what I had to offer. Z suggested that it was because I was too old fat, and unattractive in order to better understand her needs and why I wasn't meeting them. I met and befriended her regular partners, but I discovered she didn't use protection with any of them. According to my observations, there were about six or seven other guys by that point. Ironically, the only people I interacted with in the open relationship were two of the guys Z frequently hung out with. She made me feel guilty for every action I took during the open relationship, so I began hiding these interactions from her. In August, I was involved in a five-car pileup, lost my new car, and sustained a severe concussion. It left me with a lot of debt. A dollar six hundred monthly car payment with no car to show for it. I began working even harder to compensate for the financial gap, taking only one day off per month to spend with a friend she was seeing at the time and his girlfriend. And we would usually end up getting drunk at their house. Throughout this, I was also caring for our three-year-old daughter and my 11-year-old stepdaughter, whenever Z wished to sleep away. It was difficult, and the lockdown made me feel even more isolated and alone. Then Z discovered that I was having threesomes with her first open relationship partner and his girlfriend. We used to get together for drinks a couple of times a month. She exploded, accusing me of deceit, cheating, and lying. I had no idea that was against the rules because she hadn't told me about her open relationship so I stopped hanging out with them in hopes of making things right. She immediately dumped the boyfriend. Following that, she brought home another guy. See, I did not trust him and attempted to veto him. I knew him before, but Z said it was none of my concern and I had no say in the matter. C and I were friends in high school. One night, when we were both around 19 or 20, he arrived at my parents' house with a broken nose and a black eye. His father had severely beaten him and he announced that he was leaving our hometown forever. That night, I made a huge decision. I quit my job and ended my relationship with my girlfriend. We hitchhiked to a big city together, but after two weeks, he abandoned me with nowhere to go. He was tired of living on the streets and simply asked his mother to buy him a bus ticket home. I was stuck in the city, and it took me almost a year to get off the streets. I had to do some sketchy things for some shady people in order to survive and eat. I deeply regretted having to associate with such dangerous people. And one night, I saw something that convinced me I needed to leave town. Fortunately, I had saved enough money by that point, so I was able to leave. I returned home, but C and I had avoided each other for nearly two decades. Completely unexpected. Z and C fell in love, and she wasn't shy about telling me about his Johnson size and cross-dressing abilities. I tried to be calm about everything and even rekindled my friendship with C, inviting him into my inner circle. He got really close during this time. 
I believe someone gave me hormone blockers without my knowledge, which caused a gender crisis at 39 and left me feeling lost. Then, in October, she asked me to divorce Z so that she could have the baby they had talked about. I confronted her about it, explaining that he had asked me to leave you. He made it sound as if that is what you want. I won't stay if that's what you want. I'm asking that you choose me over him and stop seeing him. Her reply was, how dare you make me choose? So I replied, fine, I will make the decision for you. About 30 days later, I found an apartment with a close friend and remained in contact with my three-year-old. C moved into the home right away. I paid $2,000 per month until Christmas to avoid putting financial strain on the people I care about. Now I pay around $1,000 per month in support, and I see my three-year-old twice a week and she spends Saturday nights with me is using the family justice system to get more time to be an adult. I don't understand why she feels entitled to anything more at this point. During Christmas, I had to stay away from my children because I thought I'd die before the new year. I didn't want them to think my sadness was because of them. To be honest, I'm feeling very undesirable, and the fact that I can't seem to make any new friends or partners isn't helping matters. I've tried all of the dating apps and am bisexual. I've tried them all, but nothing seems to be working for me. It makes me wonder how someone like her can be loved by so many people. While I can't even find one person to love me, it's really affecting my self-esteem. If I'm not worthy of affection, love, and respect at 40, I'm losing hope that I'll ever receive them. What's the point in living at this age if I can't get that update? To be clear, for whoever else you're including in this email, I asked you about the daycares you looked into for our daughter— and you scowled at me and gave a vague response about ones with programs without providing any specifics. I wasn't being rude when I inquired. I simply replied, That is not the answer to the question I asked. See you later. I have every right to know what's going on in our daughter's life, and you must communicate with me when I ask for information. I shouldn't have to deduce everything from what she tells me, especially since she is only four. So... Please stop twisting the facts and making me look like the bad guy here, in case you forgot or convinced yourself that you weren't to blame for our marriage's breakdown. Let me remind you of the events that led to our separation. You were the one who suggested we open our marriage, and we agreed on the terms. However, you decided that I should not have a say in who you slept with while we were still married, even though it was part of the agreement. But you punished me for exercising the same freedom, you also violated the agreement by refusing to use protection with others but insisting on using it with me. And when I told you to stop fooling around, you ignored me. You chose not to keep your promises and consistently prioritized your feelings over our marriage. You made every decision here except the one to leave. That was my call. And I did it because I couldn't stand having my heart broken anymore. I pleaded with you to stop seeing him, but it appears you have forgotten. I understand you're angry, but I'm still not sure why I told you that. He asked me to step aside, and I requested that you prioritize our marriage. But you decided not to, even when I said I was leaving. You can't be mad anymore because you both got what you wanted. Unfortunately, I did not. Most of the time, I'm alone, and I have to hear from others that the only person I've ever loved and trusted is speaking negatively about me. It's an unpleasant situation to be in. I am not the rude one here. I am not the selfish one here. I will not tolerate these temper tantrums. Simply because you do not get what you want on time. If you want to avoid this type of reaction in the future, just tell me what's going on with our child when I ask. Stop with the nonsense gaslighting and attempting to change the narrative completely. Now let me tell you my story. I am 30 years old and have been engaged to my 34-year-old fiancé for about four years. We've been together for more than 10 years. We've had ups and downs, as do most couples. But as far as I know, there was never anything suspicious going on. Approximately six months ago. When my significant other, as Zero, started a new job, I got the feeling that something was wrong. I had been supportive of her education prior to this, and we were both excited about her beginning a career with her new qualifications. However, as she spent more time on this job... I noticed some new red flags. She made new friends at work, and the first signs were her staying out late, sometimes until 3 a.m., or even spending the night at her sister's house and not returning home until the following morning. I'm usually trusting, so I didn't look any further and let it slide. 
Then, she claimed, she went on a six-hour beach trip out of state with her new work buddies. It turns out that while on this trip, she met a guy at a bar and they had sex. This bombshell struck me about eight weeks ago when she returned from her trip only one day later. She explained that she needed to take a break and rethink our engagement and relationship. It completely surprised me because I assumed everything was fine and had no idea what was going on at this point. I still wasn't aware of the cheating. I asked her to stay and offered to go to counseling, but she insisted on leaving and said she'd stay at her sister's house. She eventually returned and expressed her desire to work on our relationship, agreeing to couples counseling. About three weeks ago, she revealed that she is pregnant again. I trusted her, so I assumed it was my baby. I got very excited because we had been trying to start a family for a long time. We began making baby plans and even purchased baby books and corner protectors. But then those previous red flags returned, and my thoughts spiraled. I mustered the courage to request a paternity test to determine whether I am the father. I told her that I trusted her, but only for my own peace of mind and security. She was upset by my request, so we put it off for a while. However, I brought it up again last Friday, while we were discussing the baby. That was when she broke down and admitted that she had been cheating on me. She was 100% certain that the other guy was the father. She also informed me that she had an appointment for a termination the following day. I was absolutely stunned and heartbroken. I have not freaked out yet, but I am still trying to process everything. I told her I'd take her to her termination appointment because it was quite far away, and I didn't want her to get sick on the way back. Later, she admitted that she met this guy on a beach trip, and they had sex. I assume they met again when she stayed at her sister's house. However, she denies having sex with him for the second time. I'm not sure if there were more encounters. She might have left out some details. According to her, the man told her he didn't want to have anything to do with the baby and suggested she get a termination. It must have been difficult for her to hear that, especially since she has wanted a baby for a long time. He even had the audacity to suggest I raise the child. Can you believe it? I guess they were talking about me. Who knows? Perhaps if I hadn't brought up paternity testing, I would have fallen into that trap. I had no choice but to leave our apartment and move back in with my parents. She says she loves me, but I'm devastated and don't see any way to make things right. I'm just heartbroken that the life we had together is falling apart. In the midst of this chaos, I also lost my friend, her dog. Though I'm at home with the dog now, dealing with the fallout from a relationship is difficult. I'm lost and need advice on what to do next or how to begin healing, because I currently feel numb and lifeless. Thank you for your support. Reading your comments is really helping me deal with this situation, and I'm grateful for it. I've already moved out approximately 85% of my belongings. The rest is in storage, all bundled up. So I'll need to schedule some time with my ex fiance to discuss it. Once that is completed, I will be completely moved out. I made certain that I brought everything valuable related to the lease. It had been cancelled, but she hadn't completely moved out yet, so I had to help her get rid of the remaining items. It was not as much as I had anticipated, and we were able to clear everything out in about two hours. After that, I said goodbye without affection and left, and I have not seen her since. The only thing left to do was cancel my car insurance and get a new policy. I texted her about it and gave her ten days to find a new policy. I gave her plenty of time to sort things out, but... I'm not sure what she did. And to be honest, it is not my problem. I haven't spoken with her since I sent that text, and she hasn't attempted to contact me in any way. I actually don't want her to contact me. In fact, I'm relieved she hasn't tried to call or anything. I spoke with the landlord, and they said they'd send me information about the early termination fee and how to pay it. When I went online to their renter's portal, my account was deactivated so I couldn't see anything. The landlord mentioned that they already had another tenant lined up. I'm a little confused about how this termination fee will work because they haven't told me anything yet. I'm wondering if there's a coded reason why they haven't charged me, or if there's another clause I'm not aware of, but I haven't paid any of the fees yet. So I'm just waiting for it to arrive in my mailbox one day. I'm assuming they'll send it, but it would be a nice surprise if I didn't have to pay the three grand. Aside from that, I am doing well. Surprisingly, I have not become emotional or shed a single tear over her or our relationship's end. I feel free. You know, I've been keeping myself busy at the gym with side projects and enjoying my hobbies whenever I want. 
I even planned a rock climbing and hiking trip with one of my best friends, whom I rarely see. It feels so liberating to be able to do whatever I want without having to check with anyone else, worry about money, or coordinate schedules. I can do whatever I want now, and it's fantastic. One of the comments on this post stated that I have not been upset because my future self knows my life will be wonderful one day. I believe in it more and more every day. I feel like I was held back before, but now I'm free and ready to take on everything life has to offer. I'm glad to hear you're doing well, too. I hope you have put the past behind you and are moving forward with your life. Your ex fiance probably stayed with you because you provided stability. I don't think her affair partner was the only person she cheated on you with. You only found out about him after she became pregnant and requested a paternity test. It's heartbreaking to realize that someone who claims to love you can hurt you so badly. She was willing to let you care for the child even though it wasn't yours. Thank goodness you asked for the test. I'm glad you were able to leave your relationship with her. You deserve so much more than she does. My wife and I met in 2008 while we were traveling. It was one of those iconic movie moments in Madrid. Our gazes met from across the bar, and I mustered the courage to approach her that night. We ended up traveling home together. The next three days were filled with passion, fun, and plenty of sunshine. We agreed to stay in touch after that. She returned home, and I continued my travels. We had a year-long, long-distance relationship before I moved to be with her. During that time, she admitted that she had cheated on a previous boyfriend and was sorry about it. She did, however, believe that her ex's decision to end their relationship was overly harsh, given that they had only kissed. Looking back, I realized she could have been testing my reaction and possibly cheating on me. While I can forgive and move on from that, because it occurred in the distant past and was related to long-distance struggles, what happened last week is a different story. I made it clear that cheating was unacceptable to me, and I warned her that if I caught her flirting with another man... I would end the relationship. Violence and cheating are two absolute no-nos in my opinion when it comes to relationships. We married a year after I moved, and she became pregnant the following year. I was ecstatic. However, she appeared distant, depressed, and anxious. During the first two months after learning about the pregnancy, after some prodding, she broke down and admitted to having a one-night stand around the time of conception. And there's a chance the baby won't be mine. Devastated. I boarded a plane back home and cut off communication with her for one month. I didn't answer her messages or calls. I eventually gave in and we talked. She stated that she would obtain an in utero paternity test and if the baby was not mine, she would terminate the pregnancy. But she asked me to return before she did anything. I decided to return and she took the test alongside me in the room. The results confirmed that the baby wasn't mine. I told her that she needed to schedule the termination appointment that day, or I'd go see a divorce lawyer as soon as I got out of the hospital. She reluctantly scheduled the appointment for a week later, on the day of the appointment. I drove her while holding her hand. I understood that any termination, regardless of the circumstances, could be traumatic for her. In a car. She burst into tears, pleading with me to reconsider, make it work, or do anything but proceed with the termination. But I looked her straight in the eyes and told her, do whatever you want with your body and life. But I will not raise someone else's child. That kid would constantly remind me of your betrayal, and I can't bear that. So it's either terminate or divorce. To clarify, I wanted a divorce right away. When she hesitated, I immediately considered divorce. I never tried to convince her otherwise. I advised against termination, but she preferred to keep the baby and save the marriage. She made it clear that if I left, she would end the pregnancy even if it was my baby, and that she specifically wanted me to raise the child with her. But that was not happening. She asked if I would give her another chance if she had the baby, and I agreed because I still loved her. But, to be honest, I was unwilling to take on the role of father to a child born as a result of her infidelity. In the end, she chose to terminate. She had complications and needed bed rest for a month. But everything changed after that. She grew distant, affectionate, and cold. The spark between us was extinguished. I tried my best to save the relationship, but she didn't seem interested. One night, after a few drinks, she confessed that she resented me for forcing her to make a decision about the termination. In the heat of the moment, I lashed out, telling her she deserved to suffer for what she had done. 
I immediately regretted those words, despite the fact that they expressed how deeply hurt I felt. When I got home early one day from work, I found her crying on the couch with a man I knew well, a co-worker of hers. The expression on their faces said it all. He was the father, and they'd been having an affair for three months. I'll never know if that's the whole truth, but I've stopped asking because it hurts too much. I started divorce proceedings and kicked her out of the house immediately. She pleaded and cried for months before I foolishly relented and took her back. I made it clear that she needed to quit her job and stop communicating with the other guy. She agreed and made the call immediately. We decided to leave her city and buy a house in my hometown on the opposite side of the country. We went to marriage counseling, which helped us improve. It was a slow process, but we grew stronger together. We both agreed to be completely open about everything, and we accepted this as our new normal. As time passed, I stopped looking through her phone. Our relationship was excellent. Our intimacy was satisfying, and we enjoyed traveling together. We even started talking about having children. We tried to conceive for two years, but had no luck. We had a lot of fun trying. This continued for years, and I felt completely safe and open with her. When the recent incident occurred, she had been distant for a few months, but I wasn't too concerned. Whenever I asked her about it, she would reassure me and show affection. But when she was left alone, she became quiet and sought her own privacy. One night she was out drinking with friends while I was at home. I awoke at 4 a.m. I heard her talking downstairs. When I went outside to ask if it was her, she didn't answer. I suspected she was on the phone, and given the late hour, her recent distance, and her questionable loyalty in the past, I decided to eavesdrop. She was giggling and flirting, saying things like, I miss you and love you too. I knew it was him. I was certain of it. Then she began talking about the hotel, how good the room service was, and when she would see him again, and I couldn't take it anymore. I stormed down the stairs like a raging bull, and she knew she was in trouble. She began yelling, screaming, and cursing at me, attempting to cover her tracks. She stated that she had seen a doctor, and that during the termination they discovered a problem. She was intoxicated, slurring her words and crying, but... Amidst the chaos, she admitted that her uterus had been damaged, making it unlikely that she would ever carry a baby to term. She discovered this three months ago, around the same time she began to distance herself from me. I grabbed the phone from her and she tried to get it back. We wrestled back and forth until I pushed her onto the couch and instructed her not to move until I said so. I sat in the chair opposite her and went over the details. He sent half a dozen text messages asking when she was leaving the bar and saying how much he missed her voice and how much fun they had together. Obviously, all the other messages had been deleted, but she hadn't had a chance to delete those from that night yet. I read the messages aloud, and she looked at me with rage in her eyes. I kept asking her to explain herself, and she eventually got up and began screaming again. She yelled that she had taken the day off work and drove to meet him halfway spending the entire day with him at a hotel. She stated that when she received the doctor's diagnosis, she saw me as an enemy and him as an ally. She screamed that she didn't apologize and that I had ruined her life. I yelled back, relieved that she had received the termination, and if I could, I'd make him disappear from her life. She slapped me across the face and I slapped her back. Similarly tough, it was open-handed, but I hit her far harder than she hit me. She collapsed back onto the couch, stunned and in disbelief, holding her face and sobbing. She reached for her phone and I grabbed it and threw it against the wall. I went up to my room and paced back and forth while she cried downstairs. And that was how we spent the night until the morning. When I went downstairs, she was sleeping. I woke her up and told her to shower and leave. I had already made an appointment with my lawyer to file for divorce, and she was unable to stay in the house while I was away. She cried and pleaded with me not to do it. She claimed to be drunk and did not mean what she said. She admitted that she made up the story about meeting him just to hurt me, that I was her only option, and so on. She apologized for hitting me and stated that she did not require an apology from me, slapping her back because she deserved it. I agreed that she deserved it and assured her that it was good. She wasn't waiting for an apology because she wasn't going to get one. It was last week. This week, she moved back in with her parents. She calls me ten times a day and sends long, teary text messages that I do not read or respond to. My lawyer advised me not to contact her except through him. I am proceeding with the divorce. Update. 
I forgot to mention an important point earlier which I have now addressed in various comments. She informed me that she did not want to raise the baby alone. If I divorced her, she would proceed with it. She did not want to keep the baby, so I persuaded her to get rid of it. Thank you for taking the time to hear today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please like and subscribe. If you haven't yet, please leave a comment below with your thoughts on today's stories. If you have a story to share about your own or someone else's situation, please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.